Warning, the show you are about to listen to contains spoilers. Listen at your own risk. Welcome to the Port Charlie Podcast, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host, as always, is... Hola, I'm Namio. Sweet, we have Zanamio. It's been two weeks. Uh, we got some... Oh so stuff. much happened. Oh yes. my gosh. <laughs> First of all, Jason wakes up. Because, you know, that's bound to happen. And, and of course, let, let, let's, let's just uh, keep this straight. Being frozen for two years and, and then being thought out by an experimental treatment did not in any way affect his uh, memory. Right. But getting run over by a car and turning into another actor, now he's like, who am I? <laughs> well, to be fair, it is, you know, being thought out, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it'll do some damage to your, your, your organs a little bit, but I have a feeling that's not going to do nearly as much damage as, you know, being run over and having all of that head trauma. You know, you would think, but keep in mind, Lulu was not frozen even, like, half that long. And she had total amnesia when she came out of deep freeze. This is true. So, well, who knows, maybe they had better freezing technology than they did at the island. I, I don't. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm saying different writers, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, it could be that. Or Stavros could have just beat Lulu around a bit before she, he put her in the deep freeze. Who knows? Because it's Stavros. He is an abusive asshole. Oh, so yeah. So Jason doesn't know who he is. Yeah, you know, after he wakes up, and and even even like before then, Danny just kind of takes a shine to him. And because of course he does. Because he he has a feeling, Gomer. Of course. He's a child, and therefore he's slightly psychic. Right. Something. I don't know. But he, 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 his heart knows that that's daddy. Yeah, it, it, that, that's the way they're going to end up playing it. And it's going to be like, really, guys? Come on. <laughs> dumb. I know, superna- dumb, dumb. <laughs> I know supernatural elements exist in this universe, but come on. <laughs> they, 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 they just do. Only want their convenience. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, like like Olivia's visions. We haven't needed one of those in a while, so she just hasn't had any. Yeah. That, you know, that's actually a good point. I've not... Oh, wow. But speaking of visions and seeing things, we see just exactly what goes what goes into that gift that Franco got Carly. Yes. Because he got her a necklace, and it turns out to be a nanny cam. <laughs> Which... I, 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 I typically do not like like in reality I do not condone you know giving some you know bugging somebody yeah I, I do not condone this in reality but on this show it's like you know what Franco being as paranoid as he is he, you know especially when he's properly paranoid yeah and, and, and all of that I can kind of understand I do love that his nanny cam looks like a giant eye like yes <laughs> so it's like <laughs> Franco is watching you. Yes, and Carly doesn't know it yet. Although I have a feeling they might figure it out a little bit before Halloween. Maybe. I, I, I have a feeling, know. It, you know, because somebody's going to catch on eventually. Especially. Oh. Because he. And it, the, the whole. The whole cam thing, it starts out fairly innocent, you know. It's like, you know, he sees Carly telling Sonny to back the fuck off and all that. And and then eventually he, you know, after Nina, you know, tries to get him to, you know, pretty much convinces him, okay, I'll delete the app, there's nothing going on. It's at that point that the app becomes completely justified. Yes. Ah, which, before we hit that, um, you know, <laughs> Hit that. <fake. laughs> Well, yeah. Fake Luke, you know, being pissed that Juli- neither Julian nor Ava have offed Michael, sends one of his goons after Michael himself. And with Rosalie there. And this this is important for later, too. Because Rosalie was there, and, and he was 
and, and, and you know what? Michael, to his credit, he realizes, okay, you know what? You're going to shoot me. And, and who knows? Maybe he's leaning on the fourth wall and like, yeah, you can at least tell the audience who the fuck mm-hmm. you're working for. Yes. But thanks to Jordan, who got the info from Julian, and she told Sean, Sean showed up. Big damn heroes moment. There's a standoff. Mike, Mikey just, just wrestles for the gun and ends up killing the hitman. And he is surprisingly calm about all of this. Or at least surprising to every everybody who doesn't know him very well, to include Rosalie and to include Kiki. Because it's like, you know, he's you like... You know, it's, the thing is, it, it's not his first time. No, it's not. <laughs> he, he has had to kill before in self-defense. In self-defense, yeah. You know? And which, which really bothers me when both Sonny and Carly come and say, no, you're going to the fucking island. I don't care if you own the LQ. You're going to the fucking island, even though Michael can take care of himself. Eh. You know, it, it, to a degree, at least. To a, to a degree. I... Still, I think, I, 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 I think I understand. Michael... I think Michael... I understand where Carly and Sonny are coming from. I do. But Michael is also an adult with a job. And, and he kind of needs to be there for it. Yeah, he, he see of the LQ. Yeah, you could do the thing on the net or whatever. But it's like, I'm I'm just kind of pissed that Sonny is going around dictating where people go and why, and and that that just irks me. It's understandable, it is understandable, but I hate it. <laughs> but then I've well, also been um, on an anti Sonny thing lately, so you know I, that, that, might, makes, that might color it, a bit. It makes sense to me because I think that. If anyone in Sonny's organization had, had that kind of, um, like, direct hit put out on them, he would probably get them out of town because he doesn't know where the threat came from. Yeah. Exactly. Which... Or or if it's resolved. So getting, getting Michael out of town is less about, you know, thinking he can't handle it and more about we don't know where the threat is coming from. We're going to get you... Uh, away for a little while until we understand it better. Yeah, which again, it's understandable, but also you know, hate boner for Sonny on my part. Uh, <laughs> but you know, whatever. There, 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 there are many other much more valid reasons to hate Sonny this week. There are, like hit. Well, this, 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 this particular week and two weeks. Um, yeah, he, after Michael leaves, he and Carly fuck on his couch. Yeah. At least twice. And guess who got it all on video? <laughs> oh, but that's not all Franco got. <laughs> no, that's not all he got. He also got the two of them talking about the circumstances around AJ's death and and everything around there. And it's like, I'm just hoping Franco is saving these recordings. Because now he has his own proof. Yes. <laughs> so we don't need AJ. And you know, we don't need AJ's confession, confessional recording anymore. Franco's got his own, <laughs> and it's looking more and more like Franco is so ready to just let it, just let it fly. But just he's got he's gonna make a big show of it. I'm gonna love it. Yeah, it's just they're they're setting up like that. They're trying to set up like an evil versus evil plot line here between Sonny and Franco, and I'm rooting for Franco. Yes, me too. Yeah, because it's like, you know what? No. You know, yeah. His past, yeah, he is a reformed serial killer. Sure. You know, he had his tumor removed and he's a changed man. Generally. Sure. But he's also not stupid and he is also not not resourceful. Mm -hmm. So he is not an idiot. A little bit naive, maybe. And a hell of a jealous streak. But he's not stupid. He's just not. Uh, eh. well, <laughs> oh. You know, and it seems like, uh, you know, and his, his conversation with Nina was interesting because uh, Nina's like, you wouldn't hurt anybody. And Frank goes like, okay, uh, I'm going to show you Google. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, Google me. Boom, 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 boom. Here you go. And yeah. Nina's like, holy shit. <laughs> Which, considering and, what yeah. goes on with Nina later on, is saying something. Hmm. But uh, the other interesting uh, thing about that was uh, Franco was uh, saying that he thought about doing something crazy, 
but then he decided he's got to leave something for his wedding day. So I'm like, oh. Yeah, this is going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that laugh came from, but okay. <laughs> but yeah, that is when info is going to come out. Michael is going to learn. Uh, and, and, and you know what? I've been wrong before. And I may be wrong this time. I don't know. But but it would definitely be interesting if if uh, certain information also came out about Ava. Yes. Who, who is, of course, hiding from Sonny because, well, Sonny wants her dead because she, she killed Connie. While the motive is justifiable, I, I hate the attitude Sonny has about it. You know, because, oh, she's pregnant, so I have to keep her under my thumb so I can kill her. It, it's like, yeah, that's... Uh, isn't that cheating? <laughs> I mean, oh, seriously. Oh, cheating. Hmm. I mean, it's like, come on. It's like, you're not even making it interesting. You're just drawing out the pain for her. And yeah, she deserves some level of pain for killing Connie, sure. But come on, man. You know, leave the sadism to Franco. There you go. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But then again, I also, bit biased, fuck Sonny. <laughs> and I admit that. But Ava does tell uh, Kiki and Morgan that she saw Sonny kill AJ. Yep, and it, I thought it was really interesting that uh, Kiki's first instinct was, let's tell Michael, and Morgan's first instinct was, fuck no, never ever let Michael know. Yeah, because it's like, okay, this is the problem I have with the way they, they work with Michael. They work with him like he is still, you know, like this naive child. I remember... When he was literally a naive child, you know, they're still kind of overprotective of him to that point. You know, as much as I don't like it, you know, having him sent to the island to be protected from hitmen or whatever, that's at least understandable and justifiable. But keeping information from him about his biological father, that is the actual truth and – in, in, in not exactly a lie, you know, lying to your son. I think that is a worse thing that you can do as opposed to just send him away for his safety. You know, it, it, it's like, yeah, 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 you, yeah, he's safe, but he also doesn't know you're lying. And when that comes out, that's gonna kick, that's gonna bite everybody involved in the ass really, really hard. Mm -hmm. And I am going to. Like, like I said, when I finally bite Sonny in the ass, I'm going to have popcorn. I'm going to have lube. In fact, I even have spare lube for this one. And, and it's going to be a grand show. I'm going to love it. Uh, although I will say that uh, the, I, I'm, I'm using the uh, ABC recap site as kind of a cheat sheet to kind of keep my uh, memory up. And it says on here that Sean arrives just in time and kills the hitman. It wasn't Sean who killed him. Michael killed the hitman. That that's yeah. kind of an important thing here. Uh. But speaking of the mob, we have Julian, who swears who who sworn to Alexis that he was not working for Luke Spencer. Which is true. Very, very much true because the Luke we know is not the real Luke. Mm -hmm. And and of course, somebody else, you know, puts the idea by. I, I think it was like Sam, and when she and Alexis have a discussion, she says that Spencer saw Julian talking to Luke in the mm -hmm. stables, and it was, I think it was also backed up by Tracy as well. Yep. That the two of them were in the stable, and Alexis just hauls off, slaps him, and leaves him. Which justifiable if you're going to lie about something that big? Yeah. Problem is, <laughs> he's technically not lying. So yeah. him trying to talk to her about it, trying to explain things, he is justified and very much justified. A bit aggressive, but he's justified in set, wanting to set things straight because motherfucker is not lying. Uh, he's just, wow. I don't know. Like, Alexis just I, – I have no sympathy for that woman. Like, honestly, because – she went over there knowing full well that she is weak as hell mm -hmm. when it comes to Julian. Yeah. She, you know, in spite of all of her, like, you know, 
insistence about him and like blah 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 she's like I don't care we'll get back together and then one lie she's like I'm never talking to you again it's like god damn it Alexis it's like make up your goddamn mind like she is she is the ultimate hypocrite and it just it gets on my nerves every once in a while it does, and I, and I think they do, you know, at least admit it and lampshade it a bit in universe as well, and yeah. and 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 of, and of course, it's also cost her her job with Sunny, which okay, boohoo, crocodile tears. She can get other clients. She's she's. I'm sure Sunny is not her only client, so you know, whatever, and uh, yeah, uh, and of course he's she he fires her after he and. He and Sean basically break into Julian's penthouse, well, Ava's penthouse, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, because you think you own the place, Sonny. You don't. You don't own the place, man. I mean, I understand why he does it. It's like intimidation and, and oh, shit, I can, he can get to me at any time. But it's like, Sonny, dude, you're an ass. Stop it. Yes, yes, he is. Ay. Oh, dear. And, and, of course, Nathan and Maxie... They they, fi they they finally get the courage up and and after a bit of wishy washing and him and hawing they go on their date and and it is so it's so adorable it's great they're they're getting to know each other Nathan's talking in French and impressing the hell out of Maxie and mm -hmm. and, and and then and then Judge Walters appears why was he at the Metro Court he was on a date with Monica that they set up through through some online dating service. Which kudos to Monica as a character because yeah because her husband you know long time husband died a few years ago and she's now getting to the point to where you know yeah you know I can start dating you know start seeing people but got a little push from a couple of her friends and there she is she's having a good time despite the fact that the judge is like yeah uh, Miss Jones if you if you continue seeing Detective West here. Then, and then I'm gonna keep you from seeing your child. Like, and it's like the stupidest reason ever, too. He's like, Nathan West lied to me once, therefore you should cut him out of your life. Wow, it's like fuck you, Judge. It's like you are not the center of the universe, asshat. No, you're not. And in fact, I'm pretty sure that's that that's at least skirting the line of reality, if not tripping right over it. Yeah, and the first thing everybody says is go to Diane and. Maxie's like, I don't know. I think it was Lulu was like, fuck you, go to Diane. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, stop whining, go. Get. Skedaddle. Get over there. Go to Diane. You know, you know, pay her enough to where she can go on another date with Max, and there you go, you know? Oh, wow. Just, oh, god damn. And... And, and and speaking of Luke and fake Luke, all of that's coming together, starting to come together because uh, Patrick and Sam they 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 tell Lulu, Dante, and Tracy their theory about the accident, and and of course Lulu and T Tracy are shocked, and and then Luke is like, yeah, you know I'm in Amsterdam, come and meet me, and Tracy's like, okay, and Patrick and Sam are like, you know what, we're gonna follow, we're gonna get to the bottom of this one way or the other. Oh. And so they all they all end up in Amsterdam, and <laughs> Patrick and Sam end up having to share a room because you know they have to make it awkward and fun, and and and, and this is after all 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 of this like like they realize that there's the only one room left, and 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 Sam is like, okay, Tracy, can I just bunk with you? I don't feel comfortable with Patrick. If Tracy's like, fuck you. Number one, <laughs> number two. What if Luke sneaks in and sees you? Which yeah. is 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 a very goddamn good point. <laughs> yes. So I mean, and I it is it's like nobody can argue with that. So so Patrick can start sleeping on the floor, and then Sam's like, you know, get the fuck in the bed. Yeah. You know, they don't do anything in reality. However, Sam <laughs> has. It's like it's like she has quite the imagination, and I imagine she was having a dream. Oh yeah, and I, I imagine that that her uh, that her inner thighs were kind of chafed a little bit. Um, <laughs> just just saying, you know. <laughs> she she apparently like 
dreamed like uh, a whole session because uh, like they're they're cuddling, you know, afterwards, and she's like, I can't believe we did that, blah 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 blah, and he's and Patrick is like, I don't know, it's your dream. That is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when the the, the alarm uh, hits and she wakes up. I'm like, okay, that was that was a good fake out show. That was yes. That was an excellent thing. Although I will admit, I was kind of already calling it. I'm like, this got to be a dream. This got to be. And sure enough, Patrick says that line. I'm like, yep, his dream. Yep. Oh. Uh, I have to say, like, I was dork that I am. Like, the thing that impressed me the most about, uh, you know, the the dream sex scene was like how smoothly the actors like covered themselves to like censor <laughs> yeah like i don't know i don't know if anybody else notices things like that but me but i'm like they they make it look so natural i mean like the way that you know sam was like covering herself when she turned over and like the camera angles i'm like this is this is really well done <laughs> yeah there you go uh and of course it's daytime tv so they have to censor which yeah. Ah, I'm not a big fan of that. It's like, you know what, it'll make it a little bit more comfortable, you know, um, um, uh, uh, blocking-wise on the actors, you know, and especially if two actors are, are comfortable seeing each other in, in various states of undress, you know, to just not even worry about it. It's like, you know what, oh, there's a nipple, okay, whatever, what a, pff, whatever. Oh, you see man-ass there, all right, fine, whatever, you know. <laughs> Or something, you know. There, there doesn't. Need, you don't even gonna, have to show that part. You just have to I show the top. I was gonna say, like, I'm pretty sure everyone on this show is comfortable being naked with everyone else at this point. I hope so. You know what? You know what? If we ever get, if we, if we can ever arrange to have like somebody from General Hospital just like come on the show and talk about it, we've got to ask them that. That's true. <laughs> it's like it's because because it, it is an awkward question to ask one of them, but it's it, it is something that. That, that I'm sure some people are wondering is like, well, wait a minute, are they comfortable with this? I mean, I mean, obviously some of them you know are very obvious, like uh, the actors who play uh, Michael and Kiki. They're dating, you know, Offset, so of course they're comfortable with each other, you know, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, and then there was some that started out like, like I'm pretty sure uh, Tony Gary and Jeannie Francis who play, you know, Luke and Laura. I'm sure they're they're probably generally comfortable with each other still at this point. Even though Jonathan Frakes may not be. <laughs> oh. But uh, as, as I was mentioning earlier, Jason wakes up and he's he remembers like vague things. He remembers names like Elizabeth and Jake. And and not go, I mean, going off of that, they, they realize, OK, you know, my name must be Jake. So let's latch on to that for now. And eventually, Liz is like, "Okay, you know what? We're gonna let's let's get somebody to come in, and and we'll get prints." So Dante comes in, gets the prints, and they're off to be tested because you know they're gonna find out that those prints belong to Jason Morgan. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Un unless uh, Helena did something, which we'll see. Yeah, Whatever. we will have to see. And and so. Anyways, again, to bounce back to Amsterdam, I, mean, I know I just went one of them back over here. It's Whiplash, I, t I swear. Um, so after after the awkwardness and, and the sexy dream and everything, um, they they all gather up and, and they go to the, the uh, cafe where Luke is supposed to meet Tracy. And along the way, Tracy stops by a bakery. And she picks herself up, oh, what is it, a space cake, I think is what they call it? Yes. Basically yes. a pot brownie. I... I really, really want that to be, like, Chekhov's brownie, because <laughs> I'm like, please, please do not disappoint me. Uh, you cannot introduce a pot brownie like that, have Tracy not have eaten it, and then just forget about it. it someone has to eat it at some point, not knowing, and, like, get high as balls. Please, please do that for me, show. I will be honest. I would love to see. I would have loved to have seen Tracy eat that. It would just, have been great. Just to see, you, just to see her get just just tripping all sorts of balls. But it would be even more interesting to see fake Luke eat it. <laughs> oh God! 
Oh yes, and and um, and I do have a theory because 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 uh, we only cover up to the tenth. I have watched past that, mm. but um, I so I do know who wa- I do know who comes into the diner, who comes into the cafe rather. And I have a theory. I think it is the man who walks into the diner and Julian Jerome, all working under uh, Lord Ashton. Because because uh, I've also heard that Lord Ashton is going to be coming back to the show. Yeah, I saw some some comments. Uh on the General Hospital Facebook page, and someone was like, it's totally Jerry Jacks. I'm like, do you even watch this show? Of course it's not Jerry Jacks. No. That's just stupid. No. Like, not not, as, not as, as, especially not as the person, you know, with the money and, and everything. Yeah. There. He may be involved in some way, but he is not the head of everything. Yeah. So, no, that that's just... No. Uh, of course, if you go on the actual ABC site and read the recap, they sp- kind of spoil it because they don't show it at the end of the episode, so they spoil who it is that walks in. Unless you've se- uh, you know, so if you haven't seen uh, uh, what is it the thir- the episode on the thirteenth, and you read the recap for last week, you- it'll it'll be spoiled for you. Ah, uh, so yeah. Oh. Oh, <laughs> that, re- that brings me back to Nina, because we focused on Franco, on Franco's side of things, and Nina's trying to talk him out of doing something stupid. Yes. And she fails. He starts storming off. She sprints after him, forgetting for the fact that she is, co- she is trying to make make everybody believe she needs a wheelchair. You know, because because her override of "Oh my God, stop get stop Franco from doing something stupid," overrides that, and Silas sees this. Yes. And she she throws off this whole "Yeah, I wanted to be a surprise," yada 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 yada, and and Rosalie ends up getting fired because well Nina doesn't need her anymore, and it's at this point where. Where where Nina is showing more and more of her true colors because Rosalie, being fi- after being fired by Silas, you know Nina's like yeah you still you still need to seduce Michael, you you still need to seduce his ass, and Rosalie's like no I like Morgan, you know and and she even Nina even made light of the fact that Rosalie wa- was involved with with the uh, the failed hit on Michael, she could have been killed. And, and yeah. Rosalie is smart enough to be like, no, fuck this. Yeah. <laughs> and she's and she's she goes to the brownstone, talk to Morgan. I, I think to just like talk things out with him. And it's at that point Ava starts having the cramps again, and she takes the pills. Yep. The same pills that eventually Sabrina comes to realize, thanks to talking with Carlos and talking with you know talking things out with him. They both realize, oh shit, Ava may not have done it. And Sabrina's like, okay, uh, who, who's the person I give the pills to? Oh, this person! Uh, Jordan, 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 you know, stop it, stop it! And Jordan is not hearing any of it because, well, you know, according to Jordan, Sabrina was a little pushy. Which she was. Yeah. But, you know, when someone calls four times and I'm like, Sabrina, leave a message, text! But of course, no one's that smart. Yeah. No. All she does, all she does, is call like four times and then hang up. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you, you can, you can say in a message or in a text. There was a pharmacy error. Ava got the wrong pills. Don't let her take them. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. And it's like, oh dear. <laughs> but in the meanwhile, in the meanwhile, Silas is definitely starting to wise up. And as we last saw him, he's calling the physical therapist. This is gonna be good. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and 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 like I said, full disclosure, we do we do cover everything on the tenth, and and I I can give this a little bit of a of, of of a hint for this next week. Silas is gonna choose scenery. It Woo! is going to be glorious. <laughs> <laughs> But then I like I like the scenery chewing. Yeah, I think it's yes. glorious and amazing. Just oh yeah. <laughs> oh. Hmm. 
And of course, Nina's of course Nina's reasoning. One of her reasons is is also because you know once Silas finds out she doesn't need the wheelchair, he'll leave her for Sam, even though he broke up with Sam at this point. Which is like yeah, and and of course now that just makes him even more suspicious. Which yeah, somebody, yeah I guess you could argue he probably should have been more suspicious before. He, you know. I understand, like, he didn't see any of the warning signs. He just saw, you know, the woman that he betrayed and has felt guilty about betraying for years needed him. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I, I, I understand. Him uh, not, him not being, uh, yeah. more suspicious. More, more suspicious. Yeah, more, more thorough in, in checking things out, making sure everything clears. And he even apologizes to Sam and say, hey, you know what? Let me make it up to you. You know, that sort of thing. And Sam is like, oh, shit. What do I do? Because, yeah. <laughs> you know, Silas is, is, and I are done, but I kind of want to bone Patrick and, and – oh, dear. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, of course, Nina. Nina is just – she is a selfish bitch. Yeah. I mean, especially since she's like – okay, if it was flipped the other way, it would pl- be played a lot more dramatically. But she is trying to push and pressure Silas into sex, and yeah. it's like and Silas is like, no, 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 no. And all all he said was, "Not while I'm at work, bitch." Seriously, no, yeah. really, not while I'm at work. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, dude, it's, it's like, you know, what the fuck, what the fuck, <laughs> oh, lordy. Oh God, 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 God! But in in uh, good news though, well, well, better slash gooder news, I guess. I don't know. Uh, Nicholas and Britt are getting back together. Woo! Like about goddamn time. <laughs> uh, although, although I can tell that Britt kind of feels a little guilty about the way yes. she ended up doing it because she helped Spencer run away. And it's and... like, oh, that's gonna come back and bite her in the ass. Yep. It will. A lot of things will. Uh, and Obrecht is released because, you know, 48 hours, no evidence to hold her or convict her or anything. She has to go. And she goes and she tells Nathan why they had her locked up. You know, especially after he's like, you know what, I'm going to find out anyway. So she's like, all right, I'll tell you. I killed your father. <laughs> who is, of course, what she doesn't tell him is Victor is not really Nathan's father, but we don't know who Nathan's real father is at this point. Still, I was like, God damn it! Ah, what? What's his? Watch, watch Nathan's father be someone like uh, Lord Ashton or something. Now that that would be a twist. He wouldn't be a Cassidy. He'd be a well, no, not really a quartermate. He'd be an Ashton, uh, because nah, he wouldn't be a quartermate. Maybe a maybe maybe. In, maybe welcomed into the Quartermain family, but not a Quartermain. Yeah. Whereas Ned is a Quartermain because his mother is Tracy, who is a Quartermain. God damn it. Family trees make me go cross-eyed. <laughs> uh, God damn it, well they did. God damn it, Quartermains. I mean, at least the Spencer family tree is more simple and more direct. <laughs> well, of course, then you have the Cassidyne family tree. Ugh. There's a reason why they make incest jokes. Hmm. So, yeah, and, and of course, you know, Obrecht is like, well, I did it for your own good. And, and you know, after he goes off, she goes to his place and tries to talk to him. Well, the door opens, and it's not Nathan, it's Madeline. And it's like, bitch, what the fuck you doing here? <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? So we're going to find out what goes on in this next week. Holy shit, man. Oh. Mm. I'm just, uh, oh, and there was, like, there's like this, uh, you know, kind of side story like that lasts for like a day, when when everybody's doing things at the boxing gym or whatever. And Milo takes Epiphany on a date to the gym. And she's and, and at first she's kind of getting into it. And she's like, "Wait, are, are you trying to change me?" And Milo's like, "No," because because Milo, he's got a good heart, but he he's he's he, he's not real bright, and and he's um. What's the word for it? Um, it's definitely Adorable. not social. Adorable. Yeah. <laughs> but, and Milo just 
didn't I, I guess naive might be the word I want to use here too. Maybe, yeah. But but he just doesn't realize the connotations. It's like, you know, boxing, exercising, it's something he enjoys doing. And he wants to do this with her. I, I think that's you know, that's pretty much how Milo yeah. sees it. It's like, you know, that's that's all he wanted to do. And poor Epiphany is like, oh uh, But yeah. <sighs> So the, and, and it's it's, it's I, I really I would love to see more more uh, uh, focus on these two because that's yeah. going to bring up especially with a lot of the stuff going on in the news and everything lately that could bring up a lot of you know really great discussion yeah it could also bring up a lot of flame wars but you know that mm-hmm. that's that's pretty much par for any plot line in any soap opera ever that's true so you know. And and I'm and yeah sure they you know this is not necessarily new ground for General Hospital because I'm I am pretty sure that they have covered uh, interracial relationships before you know I, I probably even who knows maybe even back in the 60s and 70s I have no idea I know they I don't th- I think they've had at least well obviously they've had one in recent years because there was uh, Sean and Alexis for a while mm-hmm. and even back then they probably had like oh god I want to say. I want to say Ned and Keisha at one point. I, I'm not sure, but but somebody somebody out there correct me if I'm wrong on that one. But I am pretty sure that you know that they have covered it before. But especially now nowadays, especially with I, th- I think it's Milo's father who has an issue with the whole interracial thing and to watch that play out because that's something I've not seen on the show so far. At least not not as long as I've been watching. Because, yeah, Alexis and Sean dated. There wasn't very much about, you know, color involved. It's like, okay, whatever. Um, when, you know, in fact, uh, Edward, uh, Tracy's, you know, late father, he actually had a relationship with a black woman that resulted in justice, which, you know, which was like the family lawyer for a while. And I think he ended up being killed off at some point between the last time I watched and when I started picking it back up again. Uh don't know the details there so it's not like interracial couples are unheard of in this universe or that controversial but with milo's father having those old old timey ideals and watching all that pick up and and in the drama that that create i want to see this because that that would be amazing to watch oh lordy tracy with a space brownie that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, just oh, it'd be great. It would be so awesome. <laughs> oh, and and what is Franco going to do? I wonder. Because, like I said earlier, I'm again going to try and call that that he is going to actually out Sonny's secret with his own proof. Yeah. Since he has that proof now. <laughs> Let's see. An an impressive way to do it would be while he's at the altar, like saying, I want to show a video and then like showing <laughs> <laughs> So the two of them. And, and 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 of course there was like one point we got to hear of Carly saying, Don't stop And it's like like it's like, Oh shit. <laughs> Everybody's going to be like, what the fuck? <laughs> now, how many of them, I wonder. Uh, now, now, I have to wonder. Everybody who's, who is who is at the wedding, how many of them are going to side with Franco? And how many of them are going to end up siding with Carly or Sonny? Because cause Franco is not exactly the most popular guy in Port Charles. I mean, Obrecht likes him because, well, you know, artwork. And, well, evil begets evil and, and all that good shit. <laughs> and of course Nina because well she's fucking bug nuts uh, but then you also have the evidence right there that Carly was cheating on Franco yes it's like, it doesn't matter how evil the guy is or how much you don't like him that's a dick move yeah that is just a dick move he can at least embarrass you and, and not only the footage of, of Carly and Sonny boinking Oh, he still has he's he has that recording. Yeah, you know, you know, I killed AJ. You know, we can't have anybody know. Blah 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 blah. Ah, uh, 
Which, by the way, I, I, I did need to leave out one small detail as to, like, how they might find out that Franco has been spying on them. If they don't find if they find out before the wedding and everything, mm-hmm. it would be the it would be the fact that after they finish and they're getting ready to leave, Franco is right there at the door. Yes, he's like, "Oh hi, Franco. Oh hi, Carly. How's your sex? Oh, I know what you did, you cheating bitch." <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, and so of course he trades barbs with Sunny, and Sunny's still a dick because it's like because it's like protectiveness is one thing. I think Sonny takes a little too far when it comes to Franco because it's like, dude, calm your tits, man. And uh, and and I hate it when the writers are justifying Sonny's cocky attitude when it comes to Carly. Because it's like, dude, not cool. Not cool. Not nice. Oh, god damn. So, oh. I, I think... I think this is about the fastest we've covered everything with, with like a two week period. Um, yeah, probably. <laughs> I think. <laughs> oh god, so we got we got about twenty minutes left, and and I'm, I don't want to I don't want to just leave the show at you know with twenty minutes left with with talking with everything. So what I am going to do is I am going to head over to the uh, General Hospital wiki. And I'm actually going to pull up um, one of the characters that we are actually going to be probably seeing in the next few weeks, and that would be Lord Larry Ashton, um, uh, who who was uh, actually on the show from uh, 88 to 89, and then again from 91 to 92, married to Tracy, gave birth to Ned, and, and all of that good stuff there. And he's English, so we have an evil Brit coming. Oh dear, 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 dear. <laughs> and one of his one of his big things that that's noted here is the uh, the uh, cartel to control global businesses with carbon disulfide. Back in the early nineties, he he did this with uh, Cesar Faison, and and I want to say someone else. Let me see here. Um, 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 um doesn't say. Ah, uh, but anyway, they, they only have the background here, and I'll, and I'll go ahead and read it verbatim for you guys. Uh, Larry came to Port Charles with his wife, Ariel Gastino Ashton. They came in on their yacht deeply in debt. They were in search of the dragon bone, a key to lock, unlock an ancient Chinese civilization. Ooh. Tracy Quartermain blackmailed Larry into giving her and Ned you know, a share of the treasure if he found it. Tracy said she would expose him as not being the Ashton family heir if he did not. And the search ended when Robert Scorpio's dog buried the key. Because sure, why not? <laughs> you know, I, I, yeah, it's the '80s, but still. Uh, Larry and his wife left Port Charles. He then lost his title when Charlie Prince turned out to be the real heir. Uh, Larry returned to Port Charles in '91, and he formed a cartel to control the global business with carbon disulfide. Uh, to achieve their goals, he, they thought it would be best for Paul Hornsby to marry Tracy to take over stock of ELQ. Gee, I'm sensing a pattern. It, it's coming <laughs> into place, isn't it? Because it's like, let's see, getting into ELQ, getting stock, um, running drugs, running some kind of illegal and dangerous substance through Port Charles. Oh my god, Julian Jerome is essentially taking the place of one of the cartel members back in the early 90s. You know, and then, you know, and, and based on our last interaction between Julian and Jerry, they're both a part of this thing. And... And 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 Luke, the fake Luke, is gotta be, the, the, the you know Lord Ashton in disguise, you know Lord Larry Ashton, in disguise. So, uh, but yeah, killing her was an option to get control over stock, and the cartel was discovered to discovered and put it into by the PCPD. They actually did something right. <laughs> this was what? back. This was back when Robert and Anna actually did shit right. And it was not long after the cartel was taken out that, uh, you know, Robert and Anna. I, I think Faison kidnapped Anna, and Robert went after them, and they supposedly died in a boat, boat explosion. Years Random later. Random question. Random Is answer. Is there any character you can think of, especially an adult, mm-hmm. who has not been kidnapped at some point in their life? Um. Let's see. 
Um, <laughs> this is a tough one. Uh, I'm pretty sure every quarter main has been kidnapped at least once. Um, that includes Michael, especially Michael. Um, I'm pretty sure Maxi had been kidnapped. At, well, obviously Maxi's been kidnapped at least once, because with this most recent one, um, let's see, Luke has been kidnapped. He is kidnapped yes. at this point. Uh, Laura has definitely been kidnapped. Um, Lucky's been kidnapped. In fact, he was kidnapped and his death was faked. So, and then he came back brainwashed and crazy. Um, like you do. Yeah, like you do. Um, let's see. Nicholas has been captured, obviously. Um, and Spencer, I think Spencer was kidnapped when he was a baby, too. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, Britt, by, by extension, she also ended up getting kidnapped, I believe. Or at least yeah. held hostage. Yeah, she was, she was held hostage along with Robin and the rest. Yeah, at Windermere. Uh, um, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. I think Victor. Victor is one of the few. I don't think he has actually been held hostage. I mean, granted, he was. You know, he's a bad guy, but I don't think he's been held hostage technically. So we got Victor. Um, in in fact, most the original three Cassadines, the Cassadine brothers, Amicos, Victor, and Tony. I don't think any of them were technically kidnapped. So, you know, because they were they all... They just in... did all the kidnapping. Yeah. So, <laughs> the, you got those three, and all three are dead now, supposedly. Um, Stavros, I don't think he's been kidnapped. He did the kidnapping, and the beating, and the raping, and all of that really, really fun stuff. So, Stavros is out. Stefan, uh, Stavros' younger brother, he had been kidnapped. In fact, a whole bunch of people were kidnapped uh, when the whole, when this whole end game plot, when Stavros was brought back from the get from the dead, uh, was going down. And I think you know Jason was among them, uh, Jax, uh, uh, Jerry's brother, Jasper Jax, um, uh, Roy DeLuca, who was one of Luke's mob buddies back in the '70s, who had supposedly died, but he ended up surviving and serving time in Pentonville. Um, da -da 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 -da. And of course, of course, all the Spencers at that point, except for Lulu, because, well, Lulu was a baby. Uh, or not a baby, but, you know, a, a little kid yeah. at that time. Um, but she has since been kidnapped multiple times. Yes, she has been kidnapped, held hostage. Robin, of course, we know she's been kidnapped, held hostage. Patrick, been kidnapped, held hostage. Spinelli, I'm pretty sure has, you know, dealing with the mob, does that. Yeah. Um, Robert Scorpio for a while. Well, he was held prisoner, you know, in a coma, but he was still held prisoner. Um, and has been kidnapped, held, held hostage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I, I think it's just it, this is just. I think it might be easier to, you know, no. Actually, it is not easier to to figure out who has not been kidnapped because as we're as we're demonstrating, but you could probably count the number of characters that have not been kidnapped on one hand. Yeah, because everybody at least, goes through it. Let's see. Elizabeth was held hostage by Obrecht at least once. Yep. Uh, let's see. Dante was kidnapped along with Lulu. Uh, good God, there's just yeah, it was just wow, <laughs> and it's just lots of kidnapping goes on. Kidnapping all of the sex. Yep. Uh, yes, and and more about the cartel cartel back then. I think let's see, Paul Hornsby and Larry Ashton, of course, were two members. Cesar Faison was another. Um, I don't remember who else was the. I don't remember who else was the actual last member of the cartel. Um, I might be able to figure that out. And 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 there's something going on there apparently. Ah, uh, but um, they should have a, a link to Cesar Faison's page. I might have a little bit more, or maybe not. I don't know. Let's see. Um, ma, 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 ma. <laughs> yes, we, we 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 are a professional show, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, so professional. Yes. Oh dear. And although I will I will say this, what I find really really interesting is uh, I'm looking at Robert Scorpio's page. And one of his nicknames was Sonny. <laughs> of course it was. Of course it was. 
and and, and it was by uh, his uh, partner O'Reilly back like back when he was first introduced. In fact, what got him what made him grow his hate boners for the Cassidines at the time was the fact that Victor shot and killed O'Reilly. I think I want to say in cold blood. I want to say, um, but yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> Yeah, they, they, it gets it gets in there, man. I mean, you've, you know, if you want to look at the history, the wiki is a really good place, a really good source of information for it. And again, like I said, oh yeah, totally so much, very, very much uh, professional on this show. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. So yes. Hmm. <laughs> and 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 oh god, where was that? Why do they not have a direct link to his page? God. Damn it! You're, there it is. <laughs> yes, and Phase On, and Phase On. Uh, hell, I don't even think. Fa- no, wait. Phase On had been captured. He has been captured at least once. Yeah, he was in jail. Yeah, he was in jail, so he's been captured a few times. So, so he counts. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to see where he he he. Okay, let's see. Da, 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 da. Remember his cartel, uh, Paul Hornsby. Um, oh, okay, so, so in an effort to keep, uh, Sean Donnelly also was a member of the cartel, I, but, uh, although I think he was kind of pushed into it, because Faison poisoned his wife. Oh, that's nice. Yeah! Just really great, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, alright, that's what it was. Uh, so it's looking like it's a retelling of the old cartel plotline back in the early 90s. You probably could find it on YouTube somewhere too. Oh, but yeah. So I think I think we. I I, I know I've been rambling on enough. <laughs> so um. So so we're we, we should be pretty close to being able to wrap up here. Yeah. Uh. So um. So yeah. Thank you guys for listening, and especially listening to us ramble for the last oh, twelve minutes or so, about things. Oh. So uh, if we wanted to find Namio on the social media, where could we find her? Uh, you could find her on uh, Tumblr at Namio's Corner, on the Twitter at, at Naomi Washburn, and, and the fabulous rtgomer.com. Sweet! Which I actually, I've, I've been catching up on some of the videos on the site recently, and I've noticed you, you've had a few uh, cameos and, and crossover bits in a few videos. Yes. Like with the well, like with the Rangoons, I'm like, oh shit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was that was great. That was fun. <laughs> yes. Oh, but uh, but yeah. And if you want to find me on the social media, you can find me on the Twitters and the Tumblers at Gomer Two One Double X. You can also find my stuff on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. And of course, you know, all all of these shows can also be found on iTunes if you're not already listening to it on iTunes. Um, and if you like the shows that I do, if you want to help support the show, support better equipment, or just help me put food on the table or what have you, and keep the lights on, then head on over to patreon.com slash gomer to one double X, uh, for as little as $1 per production, uh, you know, pledge, you can get access to behind the scenes stuff. You can get you know, the monthly vlogs. You can get early access to all of the newest stuff, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's over at patreon.com slash gomer to one double X. And of course I cannot end the show without mentioning my lovely girlfriend, Becky Hopkins, who is an amazing title card artist, an award-winning animator and the owner of her own Patreon page, patreon.com slash Becky hop, which also has links to her even art page or her actual um, homepage and everything. So you can check out her artwork, throw some money at her. She'll draw something for you. And Woo! if you throw enough money at her, she will do a 30-second animation for your face. Bear in mind, she is an award-winning animator. Mm-hmm. So, so yes, again, that's patreon.com slash Hop. Thank you guys for listening. It has been a pleasure, and we will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer, the Ranting Thespian, with Namio. Signing off. The Port Charlie Podcast is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.